In the last video, we finished up the creation flow in our My Maps application. However, there was an issue in that whatever data the user creates, whatever new map that the user creates, is transient in the sense that if the app gets killed, then whatever data the user has added into the app will get destroyed and there's no way to retrieve it. So our goal for this video is to add persistence into the app by writing the data, the map data, into a file. So for some background on this, if you go to Google and just search for persisting data code path, code path has a really nice guide, which documents the different approaches to persistence in Android. So first we have shared preferences. Shared preferences is a way to easily save data as key value pairs. So for example, if you have the option in your app to customize the background color, to make it red or black or white, then that might be a good candidate for shared preferences. Local files is what we're doing. And so we're going to be saving arbitrary files to internal external device storage. And these last two are dealing with databases. So SQLite is the standard database in every Android app. And that's how you can actually save structured data. And then ORM refers to object relational mapping. So it's a wrapper around your SQLite database, which allows you to do higher level queries on your data. So here you can see some of the use cases. The shared preferences, like we talked about, are used for app preferences, like setting background color, keys, or session information. Local files are often used for blob data or data file caches, such as disk image cache. And the last two, SQLite database and ORM, are used for relational data. And so in reality, given the kind of data that we have, which is a user map, and a user map contains a list of places, our data is inherently relational. So really, we should probably be using SQLite database or ORM. And that actually provides other benefits because we can query for some part of the data. It's kind of a hack that we're actually using a local file to store all the user maps, but that is going to be much simpler for us. The idea is that we're going to take all the data, all the user maps that we have, write it to a file whenever a change happens. And when we open up the app for the first time, we'll read from that file to show the user uh, a list of all the maps that have been created. So there are obvious disadvantages to this approach. For example, if you have hundreds or thousands or even millions of maps, you can very quickly see that there's no way you can store all that data onto a single file. It would just be too slow. You would want to be able to query and say, I want the last 100 or last 20 maps and only show those. And in the approach that we have, there's no easy way to do that. However, for our purposes, writing to a local file will suit our needs just fine. And we're really going to embrace this idea of done is better than perfect. So if we scroll down to the section about local files, you can read a little bit more about how we're going to be dealing with reading and writing to a file. But the main takeaway is that every app on Android will have a dedicated directory where it can read and write files. And so if we go into main activity, we're going to add some methods at the bottom here. The first I'm going to add one which is called private function get data file. And the responsibility of this method is to return the file which other methods can read from and write to. And so first we'll have a log statement here. And this is going to print out the directory where this file lives. And the way that works is we are going to get the context. So we actually need to pass in the context object here. And then get the files directory. So files directory um, is an attribute on the context, which is the absolute path to a directory on the file system where files created with open file output are stored. So that's what uh, we want. And then we want to return uh, a file with that, with that directory. And then the second parameter of file is, uh, is a string, which is the file name. And so we're going, to we're going to define a file name at the very top. So we'll say private const val file name. And this is going to be uh, a file called user data dot user maps dot data. And this can be kind of whatever file name you want. Okay, so now there's going to be two more methods. One which will be for reading the user map data from the file 
And the other, which is given the user map data, we want to write it into the user maps dot data file. So the first one, which is reading from the file, that is the process of deserialization. And writing to a file is called serialization. Why is the user maps? And this will take in two parameters, one which is the context, because we'll need to be calling the get data file method. And second is the user maps that we want to write out. And so we'll say user maps. This is going to be a list of user maps. Okay, and so here we want an object output stream. And this takes in a file output stream. The idea here is that we want to get the file output stream and pass that to an object output stream. So that means we can take an arbitrary object and write it to the file. And the thing that we're writing is user maps. And the reason this is possible is because user maps is serializable. We implement that serializable interface. So basically, you can think of this as taking a data structure or an object and then breaking it down into its component primitive parts. This is going to write out some binary data, some byte data. There's one more method, which will be private fun deserialize user maps. And this takes in one parameter, which is the context, but it'll actually have a return value, which is a list of user map. So here, let's also do another log statement just so we know when it's getting called. And then we'll call get data file with the context. Let's capture the return value into data file. So if the data file doesn't exist, that's the first thing we should check, right? If the very first time you open up the app and we try to read from the file, the file won't even exist. So in that case, just return. We don't want to return any, uh, any data. So let's just have a log statement for that. Otherwise, the data file does exist, so we want to read all the information from the, from the file and create a list of user maps from it. And the way we'll do that is essentially the opposite of what we have in line 95. The object input stream and then file input stream. And here we want to pass in or we want to call the read object method on the on the input stream. And then we'll cast it as a list of user map. So the only thing left now is call these methods at the appropriate time. So deserialize user maps should be called whenever we want to display the list. This happens at the very beginning when the app is being booted up. So I'll call deserialize user maps, and this will return to us a bunch of user maps. And we'll add these all into the list of user maps that we already have. And then we need to pass in the context for deserialize user maps. The other method, serialize user maps, should be called anytime any of the data around the maps changes. So in our application, the only time that happens is when the user creates a new user map. So in particular, that happens right here. In on activity result, we get back a user map and we are notifying that a new user map has been inserted. So right here, we would like to call the method serialize user maps with the context and the updated list of user maps, which has the newly created one. Let's try it. And I'll open up Logcat and let's look at main activity logs. So when we start the app, the very first thing we try to doing is deserialize user maps. And that will look in this directory, 
data slash user slash zero slash package name slash file. So that's where all the files will live. Of course, right now, the data file never has existed. So we get that log statement. If we now try to create a new map, I'll give us the title of California. I'll call this Silicon Valley home of tech giants. And then let's I'll put one more in Santa Cruz. Well, let's, let's save it. Okay, so we do get the new map for California created. And let's take a look at the, the log cat output. So we have on activity result, this is from before. So we have a new map with title California. And then we're calling serialize user maps. And so here is where if everything works worked properly, we should have outputted the entire set of these maps into that file. So one way to test this is if I kill the app now and I open it up again, that new map called California should still survive. And you can see it, it does show up and it, and the reason we're seeing duplicates of these other maps is because when we first uh, create the activity, we're getting a sample data, and then on top of that, we're adding the previously saved maps. So now we don't need the sample data anymore. So let's get rid of that. And actually, we can just combine these into one statement. So here, all we, we're not looking at the sample data at all anymore um, because we've saved all the sample data into a file. And here, we're just deserializing all the contents in that file into a mutable list. And we're making that the member variable user map, which is how we're displaying the recycler view. So if we try it one more time, now we should see just the five original maps plus the map I just created called California. Adding persistence into the app makes it way more usable because now all the time I spend to create my own maps can actually survive and I can reference them later on. In the next video, now that we're done with all the core functionality, we're going to add some polish onto the app and also do a high level review of everything we've covered. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know if you have any questions. See you in the next video.